الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر او انثى وهو مؤمن فلا نحيينه حياة طيبة ولا نجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون صدق الله العظيم والبرسس of Allah سبحانه وتعالى we glorify him we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for his blessings and his favors and bounties upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an that whatever we put forth so long as we are believers we do good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us Hayatan Tayyiba, He will grant us a good life. He says in the Quran that whoever does good from among male, whether it be a male or a female, and that person is a believer, that person believes in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person believes in angels and revealed scriptures and revealed books that person believes in the prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the command of Allah in, in regards to what is right and what is wrong that person believes in a, in a hereafter or in akhirah that there is life after death, there is a final day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will give him or her a good life. And we will reward him or her in proportion to the best of what they used to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising that if you do good and you believe that you will experience a good life. And in the hereafter, whatever you put forth, whatever we have done in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us reward in proportion to what we have done. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, belief in that behavior with our Creator is of utmost importance. Quite often, we talk about behavior with one another. How do we behave with our brother, with our sister? 
How do we behave with our spouse, our neighbors, our friends? How do we behave with our children, with our parents? But there is also a way that we behave with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the adab in terms of behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First, we, we need to recognize the bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. Don't take anything for granted. Look around, and, and you would see that the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, it, it is just temporary. So many whom we stood next to, so many whom we had great relationship with, they are no longer with us. Life, temporary. Health, don't take it for granted. Allah has given us health Recognize this as a bounty and favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always be thankful for it. So our behavior to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be thankful, recognize that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ And whatever blessing or good thing you have that you are experiencing, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never forget this. Always remember the blessings and the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't behave this way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, life would be lived in such a way, in a carefree manner, as if you are not concerned about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ فَلَا تُحْسُوهَا And if you were to count the blessings and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon yourselves, you will never be able to count them. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, in behaving with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to always remember Him and be thankful for what Allah has given to us. Allah says in the Quran, Remember me and I will remember you. And be thankful. Show gratitude for what I have given to you. And do not be from among the ungrateful ones. Every day, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, every moment, give thanks to Allah. Remember Him. And always think about the good things that you are experiencing. You, you hear it so often. Someone is healthy today and the next moment you hear that that person is experiencing such difficulty in terms of illness. You see your brother today or you see your sister today and tomorrow, 
he or she is no longer there. Always recognize the bounties and favors of Allah. Be thankful. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to also be bashful in terms of our relationship, our behavior to Him. He says in the Quran, وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا وَقَدْ خَلَقَكُمْ أَتْوَارًا what is the matter with you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us. What is the matter with you? That you fear not Allah's punishment and you have no hope for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created you in different stages. Allah has created us in different stages and Allah is saying, what's wrong with you? What's the matter with you? Where is that shyness, that bashfulness? Why aren't you looking for to, to ward off the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why, why don't you have any hope and expectation of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people in the world today who live life in that way. That, that there, is no, that there is no fear for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and they feel that no matter what they do, there is not going to be any reward from the Creator. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to behave this way with him. That we must fear his punishment and that we must have that hope and expectation for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, with regards to our behavior with Allah, at no moment should we ever lose sight of this, that Allah knows everything. Allah knows everything. Never lose sight of that. And once, we, once that is within us, we will always strive to do that which is right, and stay away from that which is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, يَعْلَمُ مَا تُسِرُّونَ وَمَا تُعْلِنُونَ It is the Allah who knows that which you conceal and that which you reveal. Allah knows the secrets of the hearts. Allah knows everything. And so, in our behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we need to understand that Allah knows everything that we do. Allah knows our intentions. It is not the same with our brother and our sister, our mother and father, our sons and daughters. There are things that we do and they do not know about it. Our intentions, sometimes we will have to tell them that I intended to do so and so. But Allah knows everything. He says in the Quran, وَمَا مِن دَابَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is not a living creature nothing exists on this world anything that exists in terms of crawling in terms of having life 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has control over it. Allah knows its every movement. And so in our behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we need to always keep this in mind. It, did not, it doesn't matter what we do, whether it is small, large, minor, major, it is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and this is something that we need to, to, to inculcate within our children, within the young ones. Because in, in today's world, young people do so much, for example, on social media, and they think that no one knows about it. Because this is my group. And so I do it within my group. No one else will know about it. Even if no one else gets into your group, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. What your children do in the confines of their room when they lock that door in the four, uh, you know, in, in, uh, and they're in the in the walls of that uh, room it needs to be told to them that I don't have to be monitoring you remember that Allah knows everything that you do that's their behavior, our behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and my dear sisters in terms of our behavior we need to always Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, Fafiru ila Allah, inni lakum minhu nadirum mubin. And so flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If one disconnects himself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is ruining his, his or her life. You, you are treading the road of uh, you know, damnation in that sense. You are treading a path where you will not be successful. And so our behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we always stay connected. We always turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we always look for opportunities to flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when, when, when this is being said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being referred to here Verily I, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a plain warner to you Fafirru ila Allah And the Prophet is saying I'm a plain warner to you I came to give you warning That if you disconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then life would not be as was described earlier hayatan tayyibah a good life but it will be a miserable life and so we, we, we need to turn to Allah in terms of our behavior with him we always need to Flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Behavior again with Allah. Always put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people in the world today, in among Muslims too, there are Muslims who turn to other people, who think that others can do more for them than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True believers, 
we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the ultimate. We put our trust in Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Look at what Allah tells us. He says, and upon Allah, put your trust if you are really believers. In kuntum mu'mini. If you are true believers, then put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Others who are not sincere in their faith, in their, in their iman, they turn to, uh, to other people. Believers, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our behavior with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the world that we live in, we see compassion being demonstrated by people. And that is a good thing. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, Man la yarham, la yurham. He who does not show compassion, mercy, will not have compassion and mercy shown unto him. He also said, Irhamu man fil ardi, yarhamkum man fil sama. Show compassion, be merciful unto those who are on this earth, and you will have compassion and mercy shown to you by the one who is in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in terms of our behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we always need to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most compassionate, most merciful. He says in the Quran, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِيَتْ قُلَّ شَيْءٍ My mercy encompasses everything. So as much as you see people on the earth being merciful, compassionate, there is nothing compared to the compassion and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran, Allahu latifun bi'ibadihi. Allah is gracious and He is kind to His servants. So, in our behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not lose hope in the rahmah, in the mercy, in the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Despair not of the mercy of your Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in terms of in terms of our behavior with Allah, we always need to also recognize that Allah can be severe when it comes to His punishment. And so we need to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِن وَالٍ And if Allah wills punishment for a people, there can be no turning back. Of it. 
and they will find the people will find besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no protector no matter what you do there will be no one to protect you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look back at history my dear brothers and my dear sisters look at the people who were admonished so often by the prophets Nuh came to his people 950 years he kept admonishing them speaking to them telling them to follow the way that Allah has prescribed for them asking them to enjoy right and forbid evil asking them to believe in the oneness of Allah and they did not listen except for a few Allah destroyed them and no turning back the prophet Lut so many other nations were destroyed and they did not find anyone who could protect them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in our behavior with Allah we recognize yes Allah is merciful but Allah is shadidul iqab Allah is severe also in his punishment inna batsha rabbika la shadid verily the strike of your Lord the punishment of your Lord is severe and painful and so when we uh, behave with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we recognize that that Allah's punishment can be severe and it can be painful my dear brothers and my dear sisters remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always fulfill his promise that's also our behavior with Allah that we know that Allah fulfills his promise and if we are to do what Allah has commanded us to do then remember that you will be from among the successful ones Allah says in the Quran وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَخْشَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَّقِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ And whoever obeys Allah and obeys his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he fears Allah and he keeps his duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he maintains that good behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says such will be from among the successful ones and remember the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is indeed a promise that will be fulfilled and when Allah threatens us that he will chastise us or he will punish us we should always remember in terms of our behavior with Allah that Allah carries out his, his, his threats and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters my humble reminder to you and to myself today is that yes we have ways in which we behave with one another but we also have ways in which we behave with our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially at this time when we see so many 
illnesses, we see so many passing away. Let us stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have the best behavior with our Creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, have mercy upon us. May He give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi was habihi ajma'in, with one Allahi alayhi mila yawmiddin, amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, I began by saying that whoever does good among male or female, and that person is a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him hayatun tayyiba. Allah will grant him or her a good life. And so, always look to do that which is good because every good that you do, it is being multiplied ten times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Man jaa bil hasana falahu ashru amthaliha wa man jaa bil sayyi'a fala yujza illa mithlaha wa hum la yuzlamun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at his mercy, look at how compassionate he is. Look at how he wants his servants to turn to him and to always be doing good things. He says, whoever, whoever puts forth a good deed, he will grant him ten rewards for that good deed. He multiplies it. And whoever puts forth an evil deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will give him just one evil. If it's one evil deed, you get one evil for it. Can, can you look at more compassion than that? Where can you find more compassion than that? And in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, he says, when he talks about how we, how we behave or how we should conduct our lives. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt, wattabi'a sayyi'a al-hasana tamhuha. He says, whenever you do something wrong, follow it up with something good. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will remove the wrong and replace it with the good. Here in the Quran, we are being told that if you do one evil, you just get one sin. You get one sin for it. It's not being multiplied. The law wants us to do good. And so he says, every good that you do, he will give you ten rewards for it. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Maintain that good behavior with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to the command of Allah. Fafirru ilallah. Flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always need to look for opportunities to be close to our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين والبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك روف الرحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجته ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا دينا إلا قديت اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم السلام